Hi everyone, it's Maggie Bat here with my Novlomo top 10 list. And today is my number 8 pick. And so my number 8 game of all time is also my number 1 underplayed game of all time. And that is Reds and Boats. Uh, Reds and Boats is a 1-4 to four player game. It is from Splatter Games. Um, the box is also as tall as I am. And as Suzanne says, it looks like it's been crammed in. Drawn by a four-year-old. Um, so, Roads and Boats is awesome. It is a little harder to find. It's a hundred bucks, maybe a hundred fifty, depending on where you get it. For a while, it was two hundred, but they did a reprint to make it a little cheaper. But Splatter Games just—they don't produce stuff in large numbers. They don't bring them to the states. Um, there are exceptions to that, but not big ones. Um, they're probably better known for Antiquity and the Great Zimbabwe. Antiquity is kind of a tiling game in which you get punished for not feeding your people by getting gravestones, and every time you build out anything, you get these, like, waste pieces. <laughs> and so you start, like, building out all the waste on your little card. Um, I like Antiquity. It's fine. It's just... Not my style. The Great Zimbabwe, I've never played. Um, I do have a copy of it. It's on my desk at work. I just need to pony up some some dough and bring it home. It's rough, though, because when you have these, like, multi-hour longer awesome strategy games, you just kind of want to replay the few that you love and not bother with the ones you've never played before. Um, Two-hour games like Panamax, Terra Mystica, even Archipelago and CO2, always a little bit easier for us to get on a table than the three to five hour plus games. They just tend to hit that threshold where if you start them after work, you're probably starting around seven o'clock. You may be done by 10 or 11, but maybe not. And that's only assuming that everyone at the table knows the game. You don't have to explain it. So it's a little rougher. Now, <laughs> okay, so now we've talked about everything but Reds and Boats. So Reds and Boats, boop, boop, boop. this game, um, you put a bunch of hexes down. So you have, um, like, land hexes, water hexes, all kinds of things. And then you cover them up with, uh, like, an acrylic. And during the game, just like kind of an old Rails game, you're going to draw the different pieces that you built. So if I build a road or whatever, I'm going to draw that onto the map wherever it is. Now, those drawn pe like pieces of infrastructure don't actually belong to me. They belong to the world that we're in. And so if I make a road, you can use it. If I uh, mill lumber, you can come along and collect it, harvest it. Um, so there's no protection, there's no ownership, it's just you building a thing, and then building a thing, and then deciding at what point do I, like, put something kind of desirable over there so you grab it so I can do something better over here, and then how much do I pay attention to what you're building to see if I want to come over and buy it, and um, it just ends up for a really neat interactive play. Um, as I said, it is a little underplayed in our household. I've actually played it only twice full through. And for it to be in my top ten, it's on speculation almost, which is the only one in my top ten that's on speculation is this game. But I, I feel like the more I play it, the more I'm going to like it. And with the holidays coming up, so it's uh, the beginning of November right now. So we have Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas, and New Year's. And during those in our household, those... Uh, our holidays in which we sit and we drink and we watch movies and literally from the time people get here till the time they leave very late at night, we just play games. And so with something like Roads and Boats, I might set up a card table so that the regular table can just be playing games over and over and over and Roads and Boats can just be going on. So even if I'm up and cooking or something, I can always come back and like restart a turn. Um, the game itself has kind of this um, building mechanic where you try and build the the wonder um, and it ends the game when you build it and there are very very few victory points <sighs> sorry it's very late at night um, 
but I really like games where the victory points are really important, so earning one victory point actually matters, and this is definitely one of those games. Um, that is all from me for now. I am going to a Magic PTQ tomorrow. My company is running, so I'm hoping to get in some, um, maybe like a little draft or something. But I will see you guys all tomorrow, and have a wonderful night. Bye.